strategies and, and uh, she's uh, very crucial to build all these educational resources. She should be with me presenting, but she's not well. Uh, so I, I will do it myself. But thanks again, Maria. Um, and then a couple of questions to, to understand, um, you know, what, what, how the audience um, knows these type of resources. Um, I wanted to know who is thinks he's proficient in, in tidyverse, who is every day and, and is quite proficient. So I know if I have to explain things. Yeah, um, almost the majority. Um, I guess uh, I will ask anyway, who has done um, single cell analysis before and thinks he's proficient? Half. And uh, who has used before tidy transcriptomics for bulk or single cell or anything? Good, you're in the right place. Um, and that's it, I guess. And um, we can make this interactive, so um, you don't have to, but just to understand how many people want to follow along, like executing code, and there will be a couple of very easy exercises to stimulate your tidy skills later on. So can you raise the hand if you think you want to execute the code with me? Okay, half, good. All right, um, okay, let's start. So uh, this is the page you can get from the schedule or maybe there are also other ways. Uh, and you can see here the two important links, uh, workshop details uh, and, uh, sorry, workshop details and orchestra are the two key. Uh, if you click on workshop details, uh, you will see the web page of the repository of the workshop with information. So you can execute this workshop locally, just install the package and with all dependencies sorted out for you. And uh, if you see under syllabus, uh, there is the web page, which is actu the actual material of the workshop um, that you can use on a you know, later time. But I will suggest you to uh, go uh, through the code with me today, uh, as you can see, you know, all the material here and, and um, you're uh, very welcome to look at it in a later time. Uh, so um, I will um, guide you through orchestra and then I will do a very small presentation introduction and then we'll go to the hands on part. So uh, for who wants to follow along, uh, as uh, you now know, you can keep, click on orchestra and you can search for tidy. And you will see a, a bunch of workshop. Um, confusingly enough, there are two workshop with exactly the same name for some reason, uh, but you can see one has many more views, okay? So you can launch that and that will be, uh, will be the right one. So if you want to do it now, so if any, anything doesn't work, we have time through the presentation to sort it out. Um, yep, yeah, then uh, it's ready. All right, so um, I will zoom in. Um, is this good or you want more for the people th back there? Is good? Okay. You have a good high sight. Um, all right. So in the web page, but I will not follow the web page today. You see that there are some uh, embedded slides. So that's uh, introduction I will give now. All right. So uh, just a couple of uh, points uh, to inform you. Uh, there is a blog about tidy transcriptomics. Well, first of all, tidy transcriptomics in ecos is a small ecosystem that we built uh, through time in, in the last couple of years uh, that uh, includes uh, tools to perform transcriptomics analysis uh, and manipulate transcriptomic data, both bulk and single cell. And uh, we have a blog about that, um, that we are building up educational material. And um, if you ever have to refer to this uh, ecosystem, uh, there are two publications that um, are about two points of the ecosystem. One is study bulk, 
uh, which is uh, analysis is uh, analysis framework and vocabulary. And another one is um, about Tadi Surat that I will you know, not go through today, but um, it, it shows the principle that you can, can see today as well. Okay, so um, most of you use Tidyverse already. Um, just a reminder, um, Tidyverse is a philosophy and ecosystem associated with that, uh, that runs through four main principles. Uh, one is reuse existing data structures, the main one being a uh, data frame, compose simple function with pipe, uh, embrace functional programming and design for humans. So when we develop tidy transcriptomic, we follow um, these principles as well. So this is a um, data frame that uh, is um, under the class table, uh, which uh, is a revamp uh, and a curated uh, and a curation of this type of uh, data. So we have different columns here. Uh, columns can be of different type, for example, characters, very simply, uh, can include other data types. For example, here we are including a plot, a ggplot, can include another table itself. If you want to do iterative analysis, you might want to group your data or you have multiple data sets and you can iterate functionality onto rows. Um, can include a linear model. It can include anything, including surat object and single cell objects. So it's, it's going toward from a simple table more toward a, a database almost. So the um, data manipulation uh, grammar, uh, well, is uh, quite different. Uh, you, of course, you are familiar with Bazaar, uh, which is, uh, let's suppose we want to filter data, create some new column and plot that data. Uh, you can see here that we have some redundancy. For example, data frame is equal data, um, data frame where data frame class is equal A. We might want to uh, create a new column based on these two and then use a plot function. Um, TADIAR uh, is based on piping. So you have one input is piped into a function that has an output and that output can be piped into another function and so on. Uh, so you don't have, if you don't want to create a temporary variable, which is a quite bug prone um, uh, process. So you can see here that we have our data frame, we pipe into a filter function, uh, we pipe into a mutate, and we pipe into a plotting function. So first of all, we don't have redundancy, we don't have to declare the input variable multiple times, we have, have not created any variable, um, and also the vocabulary is pretty self-explanatory, uh, so you have to get to the documentation much, much less often, which is something uh, I also like very much. Uh, this is a schematics of the ecosystem um, of tidy transcriptomic at the moment. Uh, so above you have uh, the bulk um, data and uh, on below the single cell. And so the idea is that we created data abstractions, so data interfaces basically, uh, for example, to the summarize experiment and single cell experiment that allow you to display the data in a tidy manner interact, visualize, visualize, integrate the data uh, with tidy principles. And so you can see that this tidy representation here is tidy single cell, uh, single cell experiment can interact with by conductor with the code you are used to, but now is also can interact with the tidyverse functionality. Same thing for summarize experiment and uh, same thing for Surat. We also have uh, an analysis framework for bulk, which is called tidy bulk, is very, very extensive, probably is the biggest library in, in this ecosystem. Um, I will show you briefly, but uh, you can um, do all the basic operation uh, with this um, framework, it includes most of the uh, common software you might use, use a very um, tidy self-explanatory grammar and use the pipe concepts and so on. And today we will focus mostly on the single cell experiment object, uh, but also touch on the summarized experiment with a pseudo bulk analysis. Okay, so you're all familiar with single cell experiment. Uh, you, it's a com quite complex hierarchical object. And when we want to display, we get some summary information as you can see here. 
Um, for the analysis, well, the Biconductor community contributes packages that are uh, interfaced with, the, with this object is obviously uh, amazing for, um, for uh, collaborating indirectly. And for data manipulation, uh, we have um, a grammar that uh, often resemble Bayes-R. So for um, extracting metadata, we can do call data. For extracting reduced dimension, uh, we use reduce dims function. To subset, we can do it in this way, data, double comma, and, and the, the column we want to subset um, according to. Uh, for uh, modifying the metadata, if we want to do in a very simple way, so a very simple edit, uh, it's very simple. The grammar is, is very simple. Uh, but if we want to do more complex operation, like is common in um, everyday real world analysis, um, it can get a bit more cumbersome. Let's suppose we have our data frame, our single cell object, and we want to attach some information about clinical uh, data. And um, we want to filter just the cell cells for which this information is available. We have two separate commands here. We can bind our data with our table, and uh, we have to uh, be careful to match the, the rows, of course. And then we can use this subset uh, command uh, to subset the cells which have clinical information in this case. Um, then what if we import sing tidy single cell experiment? Well, first of all, the data will be displayed to us in a different manner. So this is a, um, a table representation rather than a summary. And we can see the data is much more exposed. So we can see what's the metadata in reduced dimension columns. Um, uh, as, as well, we have some more information about the number of features, the number of cell, similarly to what is the default uh, display. Um, what is uh, about the analysis? Well, the analysis don't change at all. So this, this package doesn't do analysis. So you keep doing whatever you were doing before. Uh, the object hasn't changed in any way. We're just providing an interface for the user. What about the manipulation? Um, well, you can see here that now you can use um, tidyverse um, functionality. So if we want to display the metadata, well, we don't have to do anything. So that's uh, displayed by default. Uh, we can see that we can select uh, columns and select is a quite powerful operator. Uh, you can see here columns that contain new map. For example, we can filter, mutate. And for more complex operation, there are often more elegant um, ways to do it. For example, again, we want to uh, join a table of clinical information and filter cells just that have this information. Uh, well, we have powerful operators such as inner join. So the matching is sorted out for us. We just uh, define the column we want to join uh, with. Uh, and just to mention that uh, for Surat objects, the interface is exactly the same. So if you swap Surat for single cell, your code doesn't have to change at all. The visualization is the same. Of course, the only thing that changed is that it's telling you is a Surat um, abstraction. And uh, the, manip of the analysis is Surat things. We don't intervene on that. And the manipulation, as you can see, is copy and paste the code, ab the code above, and you get the same result. Um, here, just to mention, uh, the functionalities that we have, we have most of dplyr and tidy, oops, dplyr and tidyr uh, functions. You can have a look here, and also ggplot and plotly uh, functionality. So it's, it's virtually like a table um, for all uh, almost all purposes. And the last uh, bit of this introduction is just to clarify what uh, tidy single cell experiment uh, is and what is not. So it's not a data container. Data container is single cell experiment. We don't touch it any, in any way. Uh, and it's not an analysis tool, as I said. Uh, what it is, is a data interface. Uh, so we represent the data in a different manner and we let you interact also with Tidyverse beside all the operation you were doing before. Uh, and we do manipulation, integration and visualization. And so the question that sometimes I get how can we? Uh, how can I go from a tidy single cell experiment to a single cell experiment? Is not relevant because we never leave single cell experiment. Uh, 
And you can even toggle between views. So you, if you are very nostalgic of the um, original um, uh, you know, description, you can toggle it um, and uh, still being able to um, operate with tidyverse. Okay, so um, let's go on to the orchestra. Um, maybe um, just to have a confirmation, are we all in the orchestra or you want some time? You can raise your hand if you are all set. The minority, I hope. Uh, okay, maybe let me know if you have problems. That's the best way. Um, you can go into vignettes. We have just one vignette for this workshop and is a um, tidy transcriptomic case study. And so you can open that. All right. Here there are um, all the information that are then rendered in the website. So I won't go through everything. This is also for people that want offline to go through this. So I just wanted to specify what you will learn here and you want you what you will not learn. Um, so, um, so you will learn about the basic operation of data manipulation uh, that now you can do with single cell experiment. Um, you will learn about the representation of this data, uh, how to interface with um, tidyverse functionality. And I will show a couple of real case study, very small toy examples uh, that use this, um, this technology. Uh, and then on this workshop, is not any reference for analysis. So we don't want to teach you how to anal uh, analyze data. And we don't are not teaching here, well, me, Maria is uh, offline, but um, how to, you know, is not a uh, fundamental of uh, tidyverse. So we assume that more or less, you know what single cell analysis and tidyverse. This workshop is focused on how to put them together. Online. First of all, uh, we load a um, few libraries. Uh, you might be familiar with them. Um, some tidyverse and, and single cell experiment. Um, now we load our uh, single cell experiment objects and we visualize it. As you know, that's the, that's the display. We get the dimensions, we get some gene names, um, barcode names, and so on. Okay, so now let's load tight single cell experiment. After we load this library, um, if we print the same object, now it looks different, as I mentioned, and we see all the metadata and also you map dimensions and other reduced dimension that might be there. Uh, we can see that we have so many features, so many cells, and so, so many assays. Now, as I said, if you, are, if you like very much the original display, you just set one option, and uh, this will be toggled to the original one. Um, but I like a more detailed representation, so we can toggle back, and here you go. Um, as I mentioned, the object is untouched, so you can apply every functionality that you were applying before, uh, also now with no problem. For example, assays on this object, which uh, interrogate uh, what, what are the assays include in here, uh, works no problem, and you can imagine uh, any function that operates on single cell experiment will still work. All right. So before uh, starting the next next session, uh, does anybody have any question, curiosity, anything at all? Uh, does he need a mic? Oh, okay, I can repeat your question. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, 
So uh, my question is quite simple. Uh, are you overwriting any methods to, for example, to, to show the single cell experiment object? Mm -hmm. Or is it, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So, so how, do, how do you solve that? Yeah, so the only methods I'm um, overriding is the show method. And uh, basically, instead of showing a description, I show something else, which is exposing all the information. So it's, a, it's an abstraction of uh, the actual object in a form of a tidyverse. But because you can manipulate that in exactly the same way as you see it, it works well. It's like if you had a t-ball in front of you for, for almost all purposes. Um, and when, I, when you set the option, is that that methods read that option and if you want the old version it just doesn't do anything just returns the old um, visualization so this allowed us to not touch the object so if you manipulate uh, your single set experiment with uh, these tidy um, operators but your colleague doesn't have tidy single set experiment he will never know so the object will never know uh, tidy single set experiment existed uh, which is which is very good. Uh, doesn't leave any trace. Okay, so um, the next session I will show you some uh, simple commands uh, on this data, and um, you let me know what you think. So there are some common operators in DeepLayer such as filter. In this case, uh, we see our um, our let's call it data frame. Uh, and we can filter for um, a specific um, cell cycle phase, uh, which is here. And we are uh, we want G1. You can see that we uh, see that we have less cells, so we filter basically cells on this column. You can imagine you can filter on ma much much complex uh, combination of uh, parameters. Uh, you can select the column you want to visualize or you want to continue your analysis with. Um, in this case, cell, file, and a few other columns. Uh, here we have reduced dimension that pops pop up because our view on, view only column. Uh, so if what is returned is a valid single cell experiment, those columns will be visualized as well. As you can see, um, you know we are doing these operations, and what is returned again is a single cell experiment object. Um, we can use mutate to create new column uh, in very powerful ways or to modify existing columns. In this case, it's very trivial. We are uh, uh, converting phase into a lower case. You can see now that um, the phase um, L is, is returned. And now just for display, I'm, I'm selecting just a few columns for you to see. Um, Yes, so if, um, well, let's do this. If um, in any way you produce a non-valid single cell experiment, for example, if you summarize um, or if you omit uh, key columns here, um, there is no problem, just a table is returned to you for further whatever you want to do. So you can uh, want, to, want to summarize and visualize or summarize and integrate with other things um, as simply uh, you'll receive, you receive a simple message and uh, that's now is a data frame. Simply we, we just select file. Uh, there is no cell ID. So uh, obviously it's not a single cell experiment anymore. Uh, we can do in a real world uh, scenarios. I'm doing much, much more complex manipulation. Unfortunately, um, you know, regularly integrating information, summarizing, take it from something else. Um, and so uh, the, the curve to do that is very low with Tidyverse because there is so much uh, so powerful operators. For example, uh, we have a file column, as I showed you before. Let's well, is above. You have to believe me. Um, and let's say the sample name is embedded in, in this file column. Some, some time it happens. And so we can use extract from tidyr to uh, in, input a regular expression, and we can extract one or more uh, columns from there. Um, and so as you can see, now um, we have created a, a new column called sample, and it's here. 
where we have isolated, um, well, maybe to visualize, let's take off everything. Um, we have isolated the sample ID from the file. It's pretty elegantly. And of course, um, the good thing is that all these operations can be piped together. So you can imagine how much more tidy and um, many uh, less variable you have. And especially, you don't have to reassign a variable to itself, which is in uh, when you do uh, interactive programming it is very bad, in my opinion, uh, cause a lot of uh, bugs. Um, another neat thing that TIDR has is unite. So you can unite columns uh, to create new IDs. Sometimes that's necessary, or you can separate, as you can imagine here, we are uniting sample, uh, sample and BCB uh, to create a new sample ID. And uh, just to show you, we are selecting that column. All right. Um, so before the next section, do you have any question? Would you like to see uh, something more than I showed you now? Any curiosities? Also, people from online, we welcome any comment, any question. All right, so let's um, step to a little case study uh, that um, that happened to one of the um, data set we analyzed and is a calculation of a transcriptomic signatures that we identify in, a, in an article. So, uh, well, here are some notes of how this data set was uh, created. Uh, but this data set is ready in the material of the workshop. So by default, for single cell experiment, the information we expose to the user is the cell related information. So all the metadata and reduced dimension, uh, because the rationale is that the cell is the crucial, um, is the crucial unit of single cell experiment compared to uh, a bulk RNA sequencing analysis, for example. Uh, but we have this function, which is called join features that allow you to add to your data that you are seeing and you can manipulate uh, some uh, transcripts, uh, some genes in this case. And uh, so we can um, add all these genes uh, that are in the signatures we want to interrogate, uh, as you can see here, uh, here they are. So they are now part of your uh, metadata and they are columns that now you can operate on. Uh, so the goal here was to, we had this uh, breast uh, metastatic data set. And um, after we analyzed it for some time, uh, a question came back um, asking for providing more evidence and analysis for uh, T gamma delta cells, which are not extremely uh, documented in studies such as other cell types. And so after the fact, we had to go back again. Uh, we uh, identified these signatures from the literature and uh, the uh, Pizzolato proposed a combination of these genes to create basically a score uh, with which we have uh, score cells re them and, and did some analysis. So that's part of that effort that I'm showing you here. So after we have joined these features, we have them in our data set. We can use simply the command mutate to apply the arithmetics that Pizzolato uh, proposed. For example, these cells are a positive for uh, these genes and negative for CD8. So he proposed to sum up the um, abundance of these genes um, and subtract this. And he, uh, we uh, rescaled them uh, because we saw it uh, was providing more, more better results. And so as you can see, just in one mutate column, we can apply quite sophisticated arithmetics in an elegant way. We don't have to create any variable here. And we are creating a new column, which is a signature score. Now, if I show you, um, we have created this column. 
signature score from the genes we have uh, added to our data. And now um, here I'm repeating code just to show you that in real analysis, you don't need to, again, create new variables to test things on the fly. You can pipe together. If something you want to keep, you might want to save it. Otherwise, you go on. So um, in this case, we have manipulated our data, and you can use um, functions from by conductor uh, in conjunction with uh, tidyverse functionality, for example, uh, to visualize these uh, cells with their score. And so we use plot you map and color by this new column. You can see here that uh, this cluster um it's uh it's most likely the cells we are looking for as the signature score is quite high and the cells are quite compacted together so we can imagine we might want to isolate this cluster and do some more analysis uh, to understand if uh, these are the cells we think they are um so you can use there are many uh, visualization functionalities in biconductor and not only uh, but when you load the tidy single cell experiment, you also have now the possibility to use, for example, ggplot. Uh, often we want to create um, custom plots, um, and uh, this library gives the possibility of doing that without much uh, SO hassle. So um, it interacts directly. So what you see as a data frame, you can um, visualize it using ggplot. So in this case, you are we are doing a scatter plot with the, our dimension uh, colored by signatures we might want to add shape transparency fast setting whatever you know you know how a powerful ggplot is this is still a quite simple example as you can see here we choose uh, this spectral palette and some styling um, and again, uh, it's pretty clear that this uh, group of cells might be the gamma delta we are looking for. Okay, so uh, now that we have plot them, again, we take our code and my, we might want to um, isolate these cells and reintegrate if we have multiple samples, reanalyze, recalculate variable genes, so on and so forth. Um, and again, here is pretty simple, no variable created here. We are just in the exploratory phase. Uh, so obviously this is not the best way to filter, but this is still uh, at the end a um, toy example. So for simplicity, um, we just set up a threshold. Let's suppose this threshold is ideal. Of course, you would like to recluster and uh, select the uh, exact cells, but let's suppose uh, this is a very good way to do it, uh, and uh, we can filter the cell simply uh, based on whatever condition we like. In this case, a signature bigger than 0 0.7, and in this case, we save a new object called uh, gamma delta. Um, let's see. Here we are. Uh, we have uh, 72 cells. Of course, here we have many more. Uh, but uh, the thresholding based just on the signature is not ideal. But nonetheless, this is one, one filtering that we might want to apply just for demonstrating. Um, and so we have our, our single cell experiment uh, ready to reanalyze. Uh, in comparison with the uh, base R, uh, that's a way to do it. So a comparative with, with uh, our approach. Uh, in this case, we you would apply um, uh, you know, you would create two different uh, objects with positive and negative signatures. We, you will apply some uh, summary statistics and rescaling. Um, then you will do our arithmetics here as well and uh, update and uh, filter our data based on this. Uh, as you can see, uh, we have created three different variables um, that now we have either to remove or to keep. Okay, so um, again, this is an example. Why one thing we might want to do is to reanalyze the data, as I mentioned. And here is another example as we can pipe tidyverse commands with um, some biconductor um, commands uh, in a seem seamless uh, way. So, in this case, what are we doing? 
is um, we are uh, re, um, ident reintegrating the samples in the data. And these are functionalities uh, from Biconductor. Uh, and for example, uh, fast MNN um, drops the metadata information. And so we can simply left join uh, which is another uh, dplyr functionality uh, the the metadata of our uh, of our um, data set so we can simply left join a table uh, we can use stable to convert at any time for any reason our uh, single cell experiment into a table um, so as you can see for example we execute oh, sorry here we come. So this, calc this will calculate some corrected reduced dimension that you can see here. However, uh, we don't have our metadata anymore. Uh, so very simply, we left join our metadata and uh, we are um, in the shape where we started. Hmm. Okay. Uh, didn't see this. Uh, maybe some cell IDs have been changed. Okay, it worked before. I'm not sure what's happening now. But yes, I think the um, cells ID. Uh, if uh, I know is joining by batch. Let me see. Is the problem? Oops. Yeah, so that there was a problem. Um, yeah, we can choose the column to join with, uh, similar to uh, tidyverse, and here we have all the information back. As you can imagine, left joining. Um, on the fly, so being able to left join and pipe forward is very important. Uh, we have to integrate in our single cell, single cell experiment information that we have calculated or uh, are external all the time. So I find this um, very, um, very good. And again, uh, we can run a UMAP after this to see. Of course, this UMAP will be very uninteresting. Ah, okay, sorry, and then we plot the UMAPs. Yeah, just we are calculating reduced dimension here. Um, and again, just to show you that the UMAP exists, but of course not enough cells to do anything. Any questions so far? I've shown quite a few things. You know, if you have any doubts about anything, feel free. I will, I will repeat. Okay. Um, notice that like the cell column is dot cell. Is that like important? Is that like a important feature or can that be No, that's um, yes. So in the future, we will play also with some coloring of the table. Now it's possible to communicate visually these things. But for example, the cell column does not exist in single cell experiment, it's just the row names. So dot cell is a column you cannot uh, rename or touch it's a view only column uh, for clear reasons and in, um, the standard that we have applied both in summarized experiment that in single cell experiment is those type of columns are dot cell dot feature dot sample um, and the practical reason that often there might be another column called cell called sample or called feature so we might want we we want to avoid uh, you know, column date duplication. So dot cell is pretty unique uh, and uh, it's pretty convenient. Yeah, it's just a convention. Other questions, comments? You find any of these confusing, something you would do different? Feedback is also very welcome. All right, so another 
good thing that um, uh, that becomes pretty natural with this type of data representation is that we can also uh, interface with Plotly. And so, for example, uh, this is a pretty big object, so I will, will not execute this, but um, instead of uh, two UMAP dimension, you might want to um, calculate three UMAP dimension. Uh, so increase the dimensionality of, of the data you want to visualize. And uh, this is an object that we already have with three UMAP dimensions, so I'm just plotting it. You can directly input now your single cell experiment to Plotly, and because we have now well, I will show you. I will show you this object first. Um, you can see that you have three uh, UMAP columns here, as simple. Um, and um, then it's pretty intuitive to call uh, whatever dimension you want to uh, to plot. Uh, we are coloring by cell type, which is another column we we see. And uh, you can get pretty easily uh, three dimensional representation of your data. Um, of course. In UMAP, all the variability here is also in the 2D, mathematically speaking, uh, but is, I found more than once, uh, pretty convenient to add a third dimension uh, to better uh, have a feeling for uh, some heterogeneity that maybe was not that clear in two dimensions. And also here you can, uh, you know, because it's plotly, you can um, hide some cell types uh, to uh, have a better idea of the, of the data. And sometimes sometime this 3D, uh, even if you use them for a 2D uh, static image, uh, offer some position where visually uh, the cluster are, um, uh, are quite uh, separate and visible. All right, so um, for the ones of you brave enough, we have very two simple exercises that uh, I would be happy if you try. So um, we can see together how these things work and you can already approach this. So these exercises use um, SCE uh, obj variable. And we have seen that we have um, calculated the signatures for gamma delta and we have filtered uh, before these cells. Now the question is, if we use the same threshold, what are the uh, proportion of gamma delta on compared to all other cells? So the, the question is, what proportion of all cells are gamma delta T cells using the signature score bigger than 0 0.7 to identify those cells? Okay, okay please. Yes. <laughs> Is not with us, okay. Um, okay, these are pretty simple. It involves just two functions. You can obviously use the code we have done above for the signature calculation, and then you just need to add a couple of function to summarize and create this summary statistic. So I'll leave you a few minutes to that. Mm. We're doing. <laughs> it's it's someone on mute then.
also the people in the remote, um, I'd be very happy if you tried the exercise and at the end uh, you can post uh, whatever solution you got so we can see in the chat. Okay, anyone that has finished? Who is trying? <laughs> so I see who? Three, four, five people. So, so do you want, who wants one or two more minutes? I'm happy if you try and you are finished, good. Anybody wants some more time? Cool. What's the answer? Uh -huh. part, one, one. part one. Part one. Or the first question. Yes. Yeah. What's the yes? Yeah, so what's the answer to the first question? Yeah. Super sad. Okay, good. Anybody in the chat? Good. All right. Let's try if I get the same result. Um Okay, so we had the code uh, of our signature uh, calculation and filtering. Okay, we can pass, copy and paste this code. Uh, oops. All right, so instead of filtering, we could use uh, mutate. And then let's see that we create a new column called gamma delta. Um, according to this condition, so we will get a new column, either true or false. Um, and then we can uh, use a summarization function, uh, for example, count. And we might count, we might count uh, the instances of gamma deltas. Oops. Let's see. Instances of gamma delta that we have in our data set. And uh, the answer is the ratio of these two. Roughly. Well, we don't add the 72 back, but let's give you an idea. Is a 2%. Good, good team. Good, all right. So uh, some of you might have started a second exercise. It's quite similar, uh, but you have a, a bit of a, you have to start from a bit of a, you know, upstream point. Uh, so there are some cells that have low transcriptional output, 
let's say, if you plot the transcription output, you would see. Uh, but let's say we set a threshold of 100 um, total read count. Okay, the question is, um, of these weird cells that we might want to explore, uh, what is the uh, cell composition? Okay, so we have some cells that we want to isolate with some property, and we want to understand the cell proportionality um, in, this, um, in this set. Um, I will leave some time unless everybody has already done this. You know? And um, of course, if you have a look to the object, this is a column of the metadata. Uh, so as this meta as this object has many columns, uh, as often happens, um, you can use always the select uh, functionality to visualize just that column to have an idea. Uh, so you can also do in this case. And sorry, this obviously cell type column, as is written here, uh, is the variable you want to understand the composition for. Can you raise your hand who is doing trying the exercise? So of the one who are trying, who wants more time? Nobody wants more time? All right, so of the ones who tried, let's make it just a bit specific. If you, cal if you calculate the composition of the cells, which is the most abundant? So it's a precise answer and we can see. So again, once you have calculated the composition of these low transcript cells, um, which cell type is the most abundant? And I will uh, try myself in one minute. Since you have done the exercise, the question is which cell type is more abundant across you know, that composition? In one minute, yeah, you can shout it all together <laughs> so you don't cheat.
All right. One, two, three. The RV Delta one. Wow, how many have done this? You are shy. If I ask to raise the hand. Ah, come on. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But good. Uh, let's see if I get the same. Uh, or maybe, well, yes, I have to show how to do it. Um, so again, uh, well, this time we start from our obje original object. She's here. Let me read the question again. All right. So obviously we want. Ah, come on. Uh, we want to filter first uh, with this condition. I mean, I can literally copy and paste. Um, all right. So we just do this, and we get a few cells. So we said. Um, I oh, know, sorry, not few cells. We get 2000 cells. And now we can, uh, as before, uh, there are many summarization functions, but let's say we want to use count. Um, we can count the instances of cell types. Okay. Uh, in this case, you see that we are summarizing. So we are not getting back a summarized experiment anymore, obviously. Uh, we just get this message in, in a data frame. We might want to plot, do an histogram, do whatever we want with this. Um, well, um, a shortcut to my a question is uh, we can arrange a ba based on N. Um, so yes, the TCR uh, B delta one cells are the most abundant. Um, normally they are not. We are reached for this exercise. Gamma delta are quite rare if you were wondering. And um, for example, if we want to calculate proportions, uh, we can uh, create a new column. Let's say proportion is equal n slash sum n. Um, we have our uh, proportion here and uh, well, so on and so forth. We can, we can also arrange based on proportion to get the answer. Okay, well done. Happy you are getting into it. All right, so before the third and last uh, is a bit more intense, um, brain-wise, the last part. Um, does anybody has comments, questions? Yeah, so uh, I, I didn't know about the count function, so I actually used group by and then summarize, which mm -hmm. I guess does the same thing. For sure. But um, already after grouping, it says that uh, a, a table is returned, um, which uh, I mean, it's a non-invasive thing to group the, the annotation. So I, I don't understand why that happens. Uh, well, that's true. I mean, after you group, uh, you not necessarily have to summarize. Um, yes, yeah, so it's not it's not trivial actually in the back end to group. I mean, you should group because uh, in in our representation we are integrating reduced dimension and metadata, and we will include spatial coordinates and so on. Uh, so it's not as trivial uh, as applying that to metadata, for example. So it's uh, yeah. I mean, you're right. It could be implemented actually. I will think about that. Yeah. The the only reason I did not is because I thought if someone wants to group, most likely wants to summarize. And so I thought if you summarize, you're already, you know, not getting that. But yeah, well, uh, thanks. I will think about that. Yeah. Okay. So the third part is uh, possibly uh, the most interesting. Uh, because as we developed, of course, we developed a lot of infrastructure for bulk RNA sequencing, which is still relevant, um, but has, it, has a new importance uh, because often we want to summarize our cells into sample or pseudo sample uh, to do exploration or to uh, do actually a differential analysis. And so I will show you here that from this single cell experiment uh, object, we can aggregate cells, get to a summarized experiment that you are familiar with, 
and then we can apply the many, many functions that TidyBulk offers to do that. Again, it's all in a tidy ecosystem, so it's very all is very neat, doesn't require variable creation, so on and so forth. The concepts remain. So for this last part, uh, we again load a few libraries. Um, I mean, we load Glue, TidyR, and Pur, very um, uh, popular patchwork as well for visualization. If you haven't um, used it, um, it's very good, incredible. And we, we load the libraries I just told you, TidyBulk and Tidy Summarize Experiment. Okay, for this, um, we have a neat function in the workshop that is aggregate cells. It's quite um, generic, so it's, it's quite flexible and, and good. Um, you can give a single cell experiment. You specify what samples you want to group and what assay. For example, a typical case is that we might want to group cells by sample and by cell type. And for example, doing differential uh, transcript abundance analysis uh, across cell types. Of course, if we have multiple samples with uh, two or more conditions. Um, and I will put, I mean, I think I will put this into GIST uh, as well, uh, but is, this is a function you can uh, import as well from this package of the workshop. So the input object is the one uh, you know and the output object I will show you now. Uh, it will be a summarized experiment, um, but we will have still a tidy representation uh, because we imported tidy summarized experiment. Uh, of course, we can toggle to the classical view all the time, even for summarized experiment. Uh, you can see here that we have features, samples, and our assays, all the metadata is exposed to us. Again, we can filter, integrate, visualize, no need to you know, um, interrogate the object internally. Um, in this case, we have features because it's an important part of the bulk here. Um, sample column, again, we have these dots, as I mentioned before, these are uh, you know, column, we, they don't exist actually in the, in the object, so our abstraction of those and our assays counts. Um, you can see here, we have another sample column in the metadata. Um, and, and you can see here cell types. So we, we, since we grouped by sample as cell types, these two columns, we get a sample column that of course is unique. So it's a combination of these two, for example. Um, well, uh, this graphic is in the tidy bulk um, GitHub page, uh, but just to show that um, tidy bulk can operate directly on tables, on data frames. So you can actually format, uh, you know, you can convert this to a table and then will be a, a actual data frame or summarize experiment. Again, nothing changes between these two. You can toggle between the two for any reason. You use exactly the same code. Um, and again, on this uh, summarize experiment, you can use tidy bulk now, but still use whatever bioconductor or uh, functionality you used before. Again, the object is untouched. Uh, we'll never know tidy summaries experiment exist. Um, all right, so who, this is quite important because it's, it's quite based on these functionalities. Who has used Nest before from poor package? Nobody, one, two, three, maybe four. Okay, the minority. So Nest is, um, is probably one of the most powerful functionality in uh, Tidyverse. It's um, as R is at its core, a functional programming language. Uh, although, you know, we used to use for loops and while loops and so on. Nest is the actual very functional implementation of this concept. Uh, so as I show you a data set, a table can include other tables. And um, as I will show you now, these might, uh, you know, you, you might want to group uh, your data set, produce different plots, produce different analysis, so on and so forth. Um, and so Nest allow you to do that. Um, so let's, uh, and of course, here Nest is abstracted for your summarized experiment object. Uh, so 
Uh, in this case, we want to do differential analysis across cell types. For example, we have cancer and healthy condition, which genes are up or down regulated between these two conditions for T cells, B cells, and so on. So we don't need to split the object, run a loop, save variables, merge them again. Is all possible because of this uh, nesting. For example, we nested by cell type here. Um, and we created a new column with the nest uh, object group called group summarized experiment. Um, and you can see here that we have our cell type and each of this column uh, includes summarized experiment objects. And now you can iterate uh, methods on this object uh, very neatly. Uh, it's, it's all in a very uh, consistent data frame. And because we are not creating variables, uh, it's much less easy to uh, create bugs in our code. So uh, let's say, just to show you, um, what is inside the first row. So this summarized experiment, I just use a slice one and I pull, uh, pull my variable. And uh, this is uh, the uh, this is uh, still a summarized experiment object. You can see here the cell type is, uh, ah, no, sorry, the column is outside. But this um, includes just CD4 ribosomal rich cells, okay? Anybody has question now? I see, I, I mean, I know this, this concept is a bit um, unintuitive sometimes. Everybody understood exactly what we are doing here? Cool. All right, so uh, let's get to work. Now, um, let's say we want to do, again, a differential transcript abundance analysis. And here, here we're using, our, on our nested uh, object, we are using mutate. So we are operating on some of the columns to create a new one or to update uh, the one before. Um, a, a, when you use nest, you often use map in, in, uh, in pair. Map allows you to have some columns in input doing whatever operation you want to uh, create a new column or update a column. So in this case, we use, uh, we mutate, you create, we create these columns, sorry, we update this column. And in map, we have two inputs. One is the input column which is the same because we are updating. And the second is an operation that can be as complex as you, as complex as you wish or as simple as you wish. Um, and this operation includes, in this case, some tidy bulk functionalities to do a very, um, you know, um, analysis in a tidy manner. For example, uh, tidy bulk includes a function that is called identify abundant and um, it uses in this case, the HR framework in the backend uh, to identify uh, abundant uh, cells, uh, sorry, um, abundant genes from non-abundant genes, one, the step you, you usually call filtering. In this case, we are not filtering, we're just labeling genes that we want to uh, keep in our analysis, uh, according to, in this case, a covariate, which is treatment. Um, is a summarized experiment is returned and we pipe into a scale abundance uh, function uh, with the method. There are many methods for scaling uh, what uh, may, might be called normalization, but basically you are calculating a scaling factor, just one number for each sample. So um, this is used for uh, visualization. Usually you want to check your distribution or when you want to plot uh, your uh, transcriptional abundance uh, is good to have them scaled. And then we apply differential transcript abundance where we specify our formula. Uh, in this case, uh, treatment is our only covariate. Uh, our method, there are many methods, including HR, Lima, D62, and so on, our scaling method. And because this is inside MAP, uh, this will be applied to all cell types and this column will be up updated with this information. Um, and now it will take probably 15 seconds or something more uh, to go through all cell types.
There's a question. <clears throat> yes. So I guess I missed something here. But what is the difference by group by and this nested function? Is it, is it um, well, for very, very simple operations, uh, there might not be difference. But for example, if you group by one column and you summarize, you lose all other columns. Okay. If you use nest, you can nest, you can create a new column that summarizes something. You might filter based on this new variable and you might expand the old data set again. So you lose you didn't lose any information. So let's suppose you use group by, you use lose some variable, you might want to left join them afterward or something like that. Um, so nest is much, much more powerful. So is a, is a, is a much more powerful abstraction. So you can, um, you, for example, as I will show you, you can nest your data you can create a new column with plots, visualization, one for each cell type, for example. With group by, you would not be able to, or maybe yes. No, you would not, or maybe yes, I don't know. But I mean, the concept is, uh, you know, is much more powerful. You can interrogate nest object that will always, always exist there. And you can interrogate them downstream your analysis. Um, you never lose them, basically. They're always there, hidden. Yeah. <clears throat> Instead of map, uh, but if it's like computational intensive, could you use the BIOC parallel, like uh, Yes, yeah, you could. Um, yes, so ma I, I actually, um, I was interested in this. I read some discussion. Map is neat for one reason that you have map int, map uh, character, map factor. So let's suppose, um, you know, uh, I have this object, for example. Uh, so I have this object, by the way, you know, this is, we have done our analysis and it's still packaged as before. We just updated our object, very neat. Let's, with, with map, because there is, map int, map character, map, whatever object we want to return, you can do something like this. So we want to calculate uh, the number of cells for each data set, or maybe more complex things. We want to filter and, and count, something like that. Creating a new column, uh, we can do this uh, n, um, we can map int, so an integer will be returned, and we can do n row with our data. Sorry, um, yes, that's the input column. Of course, we want to uh, provide to, come on, to map. And so we have a new column that is integer. So it returns whatever object you want. Um, if we just use map, I think apply is exactly the same thing. And uh, you can apply parallel frameworks. In fact, uh, there is a package called future map which use the future infrastructure, which is again, pretty powerful to apply this map functionality in parallel. So basically I could have done all my analysis, differential analysis in parallel, or maybe into a cluster or something like that. So you can imagine that this potentially could be powerful if you have single cell data, you want to distribute your computation. Um, okay, so that's the object is returned. Any other question before we go on? Uh, yeah, this is a question from, from the chat. Uh, it says, uh, not a package related question, but how to decide if we require pseudo bulking for the analysis or not? Can't we simply compare treated versus untreated per cluster? Um, is pseudo bulking required when comparing SC RNA seq results with bulk RNA seq results? Okay, so if the question is, do we necessarily need to use pseudo bulk? Is, is this the point of the question, I guess? Uh, How we decide that we need this? I mean, it's a personal choice. There are, 
you know, many methods. Some, some approaches use, summarize the data in pseudo-bulk and use uh, very known methods for testing. And there are also, uh, you know, uh, mixture models or other approaches that do not require pseudo-bulk is a choice of researcher. I think, for example, one very useful thing is that, let's say you have a very big data set with 100 samples. For doing the initial exploration analysis to understand what's the biological or technical variability in your data set, it's much easier to reduce these cells into a single sample and do a PCA analysis, for example. So then you can decide your covariates, your um, confounders, and so on and so forth. Um, so for exploratory analysis, it doesn't hurt ever. I think it's very useful. For te hypothesis testing, um, is, is the choice of, is, is a complex answer. So it's the choice of uh, the researcher. Yeah. Um, any other question before we go on? We have the last couple of blocks and then we're done. So everybody is clear with what we have done here. So applying this map function. If there is any doubt, let me know. So we are all on the same page, it would be nice. Okay. Well, some output here. Again, um, still, this is basically becoming a database. Um, is is uh, again very clean to understand. Uh, I will pull uh, just to show you the first object here. Again, a CD4 cells, and uh, you can see that um, tidy bulk basically. Every time you do an operation, it adds information to your uh, data frame. So, for example, um, you have we have added, we have um, identified abundant transcript. So we have an abundant column. Um, well, this is an A because this is abundant false. So we just test the abundant genes. As you can see here, we don't need to filter our data. Once we identify abundant, some tests, some genes will be tested. Um, and the scaling will be done on the abundance, uh, but you still have all the information you need for all genes. Sometimes this is very helpful because you might want to scale based on housekeeping genes, but you want, you want to keep all genes for visualization or whatnot. So we break the filtering analysis loop here. This is not needed at all. But let's say we want to visualize just the results for which um, we have, uh, sorry, just the, a data for which we have results. Uh, we can, well, here, uh, normally I, you know, you would do into the map functionality, but I will just take off the first element of the list. And um, I filter based on abundant, for example. You can see now that we have our statistics and our uh, differential uh, transcript abundance has added Lock for change, uh, FDR, and so on. And now you can go on filter, visualized. Uh, again, I haven't created a one, I created one variable here. No more than that. Now, this is the last block. Actually, we are almost done with time. Um, another thing you might want to do, of course, after you have done your test, is to visualize, pick up the whatever genes are significant, build block, box plot, and so on. Um, also here, the nesting, very powerful. We can do this uh, in a very elegant and self-contained way, not creating any variable uh, external loops and so on. So we have three steps uh, if we want to create plots. For, for example, uh, first of all, uh, we want to filter significant uh, associations. Uh, again, this is a toy example. I'm filtering very high threshold, but you can imagine you set your own threshold. Uh, so again, we are using map uh, and we are updating this column. We might want to create another column if we like, and another column with filter data will be uh, built. In this case, we are running through cell types and filtering. Uh, we are filtering some cell types do not have significant transcript. Usually this doesn't happen, but this is a toy example. Uh, so ggplot doesn't like empty data sets. Um, just because we are faceting, otherwise you could even plot empty data set and everything is very modular uh, and elegant. But anyway, in this case, uh, we filter uh, here again, it's a bit complicated. I show you map int, 
you are producing an integer from one of your column. Here we are filtering based on this result. So we are um, now that we are filtered, we want to know which cell type have any transcript remained uh, that is bigger than one. So uh, and no bigger than one. Anyway, so we get. I can show you uh, this. Uh, oops. Um, you know our filtering, and we can see that not all cell types survived here. And then with the cell type that have significant transcript, you can see that now we have just five rows with our uh, summarized experiments. And now again, we can produce a new column with our plots for every cell type. And here we are using map two, which doesn't take one column for input, but takes two columns and produce one output. In this case, we are creating a column called plot, which is the output. And we are putting two columns together which is our data and the cell type. Here, the cell type, I just want to add a title to the plot. That's why I'm keeping it. Um, so, well, dot X, I didn't tell you, is the actual input uh, for map. So this is dot X and this is dot Y in this function. So dot X, we use directly ggplot. Again, dot X is a summarized experiment. So you can forget about that is a summarized experiment. You just work, crunch through. Uh, we want to, on the X, we want, we want to build a box plot of significance. Uh, we have treatment on the X and count scale on the Y. Uh, we do plus one because uh, we want to scale the axis afterwards. Box plot, we color them, so on and so forth. Um, well, execute this. And um, we add the title uh, with the cell type. Uh, as I show you. Again, I show you this, uh, the results. Again, very neat. Everything we need is included in the data frame. We have our filter data and our plot. And now thanks to um, patchwork, well, first of all, I show you, as before, I want to show you one of these plots to, to see what's inside. I just slice one and pull the column. Here you go, that's our plot. We see some association. Again, um, you can imagine how many things you can do with ggplot and all the ecosystem there. Um, but if we use patchwork, we can neatly uh, wrap of all these plots in a very big uh, summary plot. And here, well, we have our own style here, but basically we use, we pull all the plots. So we have a list of plots, we pipe into a wrap plot function. And um, this is what we get out. So it's, um, we have five uh, plots for our five cell types with our significant genes and so on. So this was a toy example to show you, you can do quite complicated things with minimal variable creation. You can, when you uh, manipulate data, you can try different paths that you might not like, actually are the majority, and you don't need to clog your environment, just create piping paths you keep what you like and, and the rest, you forget about them. That's it. Um, I hope you liked it. Thanks for um, uh, intervening and contributing. I uh, appreciate that. Um, any questions? All right, cool. Yeah, so I have a question. Yes, yeah, it's, it's really cool. Uh, so, uh, but so far it um, looks like it only works on call data and uh, gene expression. So how about row data? So does it work with row data or do you plan to make it work with row data? Yes, so, um, well, if, so at the moment, row data is a bit complicated because there is no a, a unique format, but if it's not grouped row data, let's say one transcript as one interval, Sometimes that's the thing. Uh, this information is in your data frame, such a, like it was reduced dimension, we attach the raw data there. So again, you can use filtering um, and other things. Now I haven't worked much on raw data. If, for example, the raw data is grouped, sometimes one feature has multiple uh, locations. Uh, so this will be just a nested. So you will, you will see a table. So the brief answer is, I would like to expand the raw data. It's, uh, it's not obvious to me how to do it now. Uh, 
I welcome contributors. Now we are a small team, but hopefully if people like it, will also be um, you know possible to work together. Um, so it will happen more in the future. At the time, at the moment, um, is not uh, so powerful manipulating raw data. But of course, I mean this is still a summarized experiment. So you can apply all tools you were applying before with uh, you know G ranges, ply ranges, or will not. Um, any other questions? Did you like it? Yeah. Good. Cool. All right. So feel free to contact me. Uh, let's keep in touch. If anybody is passionate about this, we can do a lot of work. Uh, then also, we plan to um, you know do a publication on the bio tidy bioconductor. So if any PhD student want uh, to come on board, also there are uh, you know author. Uh, I mean, there is a publication opportunity, of course, to 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 have something back concrete. Um, and uh, last thing, I will just send you to well, well, look for the GitHub uh, tidy transcriptomics. You will see all packages there, and I'm sure you can find everything you need. All right, thanks a lot.